what year is it? Uh, it is Sunday, January, I think it's the 13th. Oh, man. Uh, season 5, play that. Oh, yeah. Play that beat back. What's up, everybody? So, um, it's been a while. I think to say we dropped the ball is an understatement. I'll say that, that much. I am Tom K, coming to you from North Baltimore City. Uh, we have <laughs> Amber over in some place over there in Western Maryland. I'm not in a shed. Next to- I'm not in a shed today. Not in the shed. Yeah, we upgraded our settings for scenarios this time. Yes. And we have Justin in Pennsylvania. And of course, we have Alpha nowhere to be found. What a great way to start off the fifth he- season of our show with him not showing up. Now, has it really been five, few five seasons? Discuss. This is the fifth season, yes. Our fifth year of doing it. This will be our fifth year of doing it. No. No way. It can't be. It can be. It can't. I, I started in, We started yeah. 2009, which was like a short season. 2010 was second season. 11 was third season. 12 was, four, 12, 12 was our fourth season. So this is our fifth season, yeah. 2013 is the fifth season of the Super Awesome Film Show. Does season 14 really count, though? Because it was only 12 episodes. Well, you know what? The writer's strike, they have those little short seasons when the writer's strike happened. So I'm going to say it counts. Uh, I'm going to say it Uh, doesn't count. I'm going to say it does. We still had 14 episodes in season four, which I still say counts as a small (laughs) miniseries. Okay. I mean, when the the writer's strike happened, they cut all those seasons down to six or seven episodes. Walking Dead season one was seven episodes. Walking Dead season one was seven episodes long. That's what I'm saying. It's quality, not quantity. Damn it. Even though the quality is pretty <laughs> crappy, too. We, we should talk about that for a second. <laughs> we are going to make a vow to whoever else is still out there listening to Season 5 of the Super Awesome Film Show that we are going to focus more on... Ooh, hold on. Sorry, I just got distracted. Quentin Tarantino just won screenplay for Django Unchained. Yes! Quentin Tarantino won screenplay. Best screenplay, Django Unchained. Okay. Um... We need to focus. It's a bad. <laughs> what a great segue. We need to focus this year in season five. So we're trying. We're going to try our hardest to bring you one episode every two weeks. And if we can't film on a Sunday, doesn't matter. We're going to try to film it on like a Friday or a Monday or a Saturday. We're going to get an episode done every weekend, hopefully. And we're going to get it online to you, to the wonderful masses out there, whoever still listens to us on the interwebs. And we'll listen. And yeah. So hopefully it'll work out. Now I'm thinking, I know I talked in, I think, at the start of season three about like how season three has a lack of quality. Because most TV shows, season two starts out, season two always ends out great, and then season three starts out amazing, and it falls in quality. It's happened before. It's happened with many different shows, like Dr. House and all that kind of stuff. I'm thinking season five. Not many shows can get to season five and still be fantastic. I'm going to say Mad Men was great in season five. Uh, the Simpsons, Law and Order. Not many Buffy. Not Angel. Not many shows can get to season five and have their best stuff. We're going to try and doing that. Doctor Who with Matt Smith. I don't know if his best stuff yet, but Doctor Who is a season five thing possible too. But yeah, season five, some of it can be the highest grade stuff because they've had five years to craft their skills. Hopefully that can be us. Alpha isn't here yet though. So. <laughs> yeah. But let's, uh, we're not going to talk about the box office because we've been gone for two months so we should just talk about the holiday oscar push which is pretty much like all like the the most oscar nominated all the stuff that all this is trying to get the oscar push comes out in november and december and we've saw a whole big cluster hand fill of that stuff amber you pick yes. first we're gonna talk about first um okay uh let me think uh oh god there's so many so yeah. many um <laughs> Uh, we both saw, let's see, D- D- Django Unchained. Yes, right? I saw Django, not the Django, but oh, sorry. Django. Django the Unchained. Asylum. Yes. Um, let's start I off with that, because it's one of my favorites. All right. Well, the script literally just won a Golden Globe like two minutes ago, which is cool. Um, so it's, well, it's not really a remake or not, not a reboot. It's It takes elements from old spaghetti westerns. They got Ennio, it's Quentin Tarantino, they got Ennio Marcone to help with the music, 
Uh, they've got cameos by old spaghetti western actors. It has a very spaghetti western style, except it was shot in 2011. It came out in 2012. Uh, it's about Christoph Waltz trying to hunt down his bail, his bounty hunter, and he and he has to enlist the help of <laughs> he has to enlist the help of Jimmy Fox, who plays Django, and they go on a quest from which he sets him more or less quasi sets him free. Keeps him as a slave to help him hunt down whoever, but eventually does set him free. And so it's Christopher Waltz, Christoph Waltz, Christoph Waltz, and Jimmy Fox going around the the old west in the eighteen sixties, hunting down, uh, hunting down slave slave owners, and trying to find Jimmy Fox's wife, who is owned by the crazy psychopathic Leonardo DiCaprio and his crazy old uh, butler Samuel Jackson. Yes. Now, personally. I don't think it was Tarantino. It was Tarantino's best movie ever. It felt that kind of, I guess, after *Inglorious Bastards*, I was just expecting like something huge to happen, and it didn't come out. Didn't come as I don't know. It was fun. It was definitely one of the better movies of the season of the. I would say of 2012. I'd say yes. top five of the movies I've seen 2012. But as far as a Tarantino flick goes, I'm saying it's kind of low on my radar as far as Tarantino movies go. Stuff I would want to see like over and over again. Yeah. Because I like this movie more than Inglorious Bastards. I like it more really? than Kill Bill. It's, oh, it's yeah, well, yeah. I Kill like Bill it there. With, it's like how much I like Pulp Fiction. I'm not a huge like. I I don't love every single Tarantino movie. Like I don't like um, Reservoir Dogs. I can. Oh. I appreciate Kill Bill. I did like Inglorious Bastards, but I didn't love it like everybody did. But I do. Yeah. I do like Django Unchained. I'll say top to bottom, top like top to bottom, like best and worst Tarantino movies. I'm gonna say top is Inglorious Bastards, then Death Proof with Kurt Russell, then I'll say uh, Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, Django, Jackie Brown, Kill Bill at the bottom. I think we're complete opposites when we when we think of because I wouldn't even put Death Proof at the very top. It would be the the bottom of the barrel. I hate that movie. Oh, that. Death Proof was like the first. That was one of the few movies where he could just like flesh out the characters and the script. He wasn't trying to. He wasn't trying to just because like, like the whole thing is like Death Proof came out. I guess it, it came with Grindhouse. It was the second movie in the list. So mm-hmm. you've already spent a good two hours in the theater already, and here's another hour and a half worth of film for you to watch. So I thought it was Tarantino just doing whatever he wanted to do because he was producing it. Robert Rodriguez was not going to hold him back at all. He cut out what he chose to cut out because he released it later in the I think Cannes Film Festival by itself as Death Proof by itself. But like, yeah, much like so, like there were like no cuts at all. He could do whatever. That was that was the movie where he was first free to do whatever he wanted to do, and I thought it turned out really good. It was mm. different for a Tarantino movie. I was into it though. It wasn't like nothing but crazy guns firing everywhere and action all that kind of stuff. It was an old school like car chase action movie with a lot of like uh, a lot of like dialogue driven stuff. I was a big fan of it. I I but, disagree on on the on the highest level, but because we have a lot of list, <laughs> I will I, we will agree to disagree. Yes, Tarantino's <laughs> still pretty good. I just like Death Proof a lot more than Amber does. All oh, righty. Okay. Hate it, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah, I'll say the, the highlight of Django for me that the film was definitely I'm gonna have to say either Christoph the combination of Christoph Waltz and Leonardo DiCaprio. Their like dialogues back and forth I thought were probably some of the best stuff they did because Jimmy Fox actually stayed rather quiet for a lot of the movie. He was like it was um, mostly Chris. He was like Clint Eastwood in a western. He was very quiet. He was. Mm-hmm. He was. He was very quiet. Christoph Waltz was like the mentor leading him through the ways of like, here's how to be a free man and here's how to kill bounties and stuff. And then Leonardo DiCaprio was like this very wise, very tricky, very very crazy uh, slave owner. I loved um, Leonardo DiCaprio and, I'm, and I kind of am still baffled that um, you yeah. know, he uh, that he wasn't snubbed. nominated for an Oscar. I, I liked Christoph Waltz, but I feel like... Um, I feel like- Leonardo DiCaprio kind of stole the movie, especially during that. He did for the movie, and I, I don't. And, and he was, he was in the with, whole second half of the film. Too. Like the so, the whole last, like the whole oh, yeah. last hour and a half of the film was all the dinner scene. Yeah, and I I think uh, like I know I think Waltz won for best supporting actor at the 
Golden Globes, which I, I disagree with. I think it, Leonardo DiCaprio should have won. And I think instead of Waltz being nominated for Best Supporting Actor at the Oscars, it should have been Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm still kind of baffled yeah. by that. Yeah, there was definitely some... Leonardo DiCaprio, I think, he's trying to get that Oscar now. He's going crazy. Because like, there's a scene, it's not really a spoiler, like... And he has like it's, he has like a, he has like a spaz that moment. He like freaks out and he mm-hmm. starts kissing the table. And apparently, the the take they used in the film, he broke his hand on a glass. He cut and his, his hand, hand started to bleed, and so he's talking. He's he's still he's still going through the whole scene with his hand starting to bleed out. And so eventually, they they do cut to a closer shot and stuff. But Tarantino used that first take where he cuts his hand. Everyone freaks out for a second, and he keeps going through the whole thing because you can definitely tell. Because before this, before I saw the movie, I heard about that thing, so yeah. I was waiting for it to happen. So when I, when I saw him hit his hand on the table, I'm like, okay. And I see everybody kind of look around real quick, like they all know that they should call cut, but they're not. And he's just going mm-hmm. through with it. So everyone's really freaked out about that. I also so like that one scene. During that scene, you could see him like he's still going, and you see him like picking out glass out of his hand yeah. and still going and I was like this guy needs to get an Oscar because I know he actually cut his this, hand yeah. he's still going and he's you can see him picking out glass and wrapping his hand up and like whatever and still going yeah he was sick with it and Tarantino liked it and they said they, they, they called cut eventually wrapped his hand up and then just kept going and kept, so they kept showing his bloody hand they kept getting they kept like getting, touching his bloody hand up a little bit it was it, sick it was so wild uh, yeah, and it, so you got one it's best role there's it, yeah, and you gotta and you gotta wonder the scene where and there's a few like about like thirty seconds later a minute a minute later, he like wipes his bloody hand on Kerry <laughs> Washington's character. You think was that his real blood? Is I, that I like real fear? Is that, is that real I fear hope. in her eyes right now? <laughs> I I hope he yeah. didn't go that far, but if he did, then he definitely deserves that Oscar and he deserved that nomination. And I'm really surprised. I'm kind of pissed off. I mean, I know the Oscars are bullshit, and this is a reason why. This is one of the big reasons why they're bull- because he should have at least been nominated he should um he should have won the golden globe but whatever it's his best role he definitely should he it plays a villain say, he's always played the good guy I'll he's say, playing a villain it's his, i'll say it's his top three roles i think top three it's uh calvin candy from django mm-hmm. howard hughes in the aviator and i'll say gilbert grape were his top three G- gilbert grape is the number one because for a while i before i knew who leonardo DiCaprio was yeah. I, I really thought he was a mentally yeah. Slow and then person. I'll, yeah. Yeah. And th- then I'll say Calvin Candy number two, and I'll say Aviator spot number three. Like they were all really good, really good spots. He should he should have a gold, so, uh, an Oscar by now. He really should. It's a shame. He should. Did did he win a Golden Globe yet? I thought he won a Golden Globe. Um, he he might have a Golden Globe for something, but he not, I know he doesn't have an Oscar. I yeah. And it better uh. not. Be- that they don't give him an Oscar later down the road before he's about to die because, you know, he's been nominated. So he oh, needs the, to the, the post get one stuff. for what he does. Yeah. Yeah, like the post. Oh, yeah. I hope, I hope you're right. I hope he doesn't just do that kind of weird stuff. Wait, I'm wondering, why did they... I'm just checking Golden Globes again at the corner of my eye. They have, t- they have, they have Stallone and Schwarzenegger presenting the Oscar for Best Foreign Film. I'd understand Schwarzenegger. Um, Stallone, you just can't understand what he's saying because of his speech impediment. Maybe. Yeah, best film of all film, film. Yes, yes, they are, Steven. <laughs> yes, they are, Sylvester. These are the ones for best of all the film. <laughs> and this director, this director walks up like this. I get to shake Schwarzenegger's hand when I get my Oscar, my Golden Globe. That's kind of cool. Oh, the guy from Austria won from a Moor. Okay, so that's kind of cool. He shakes Arnold's hand. <laughs> the biggest Austrian import of all time. Uh, but yeah. So Django, definitely worth the view. Go see it for DiCaprio's performance. It's definitely one of the best films of the year. Very yes. violent. They use the N-word a lot. Violent to the point. It's, it's almost like the like it's like violent to the point it's ridiculously violent. Yes. Like there's one scene right. near the near the end where like near the end where he's like he's using a using like a half a half guy who's half alive to like block the bullets. So this guy keeps getting lit up and he's just yelling mm-hmm. whenever he gets shot. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. The violence is over the top ridiculous, and it's kind of fun. But yeah, I speak before before we get. Into, did you hear about the whole Tarantino? What he said about how his films are all in the same alternate universe timeline. Um, I heard about him and um, Inglorious Bastards, and how you know his trilogy that those are kind. They they might be in the same timeline. 
No, you've been saying all films are in the same timeline now. Like back in the 1940s, Hitler was killed violently in a movie theater. And so in this timeline, everybody now appreciates pop culture because it helped take down Hitler. Everyone appreciates pop culture and they're atto- and they're accustomed to violence. So that's why everything in the pulp in in the pulp fiction Reservoir Dogs Death Proof World, it's all they're okay, they all reference really obscure movies and really obscure pop culture references and true romance too. And then they all are just hyper on the hyper violence. They don't even care about the hyper violence. So that's why everything is just like very violent, and they all quote really random films and stuff because I, I haven't heard Hitler that. was killed at the theater. Huh? I haven't I haven't heard that. I haven't read that, but. Now I know. And he explained how Kill Bill is just like, it's a movie within this alternate universe, which is why it's super extra violent, because Mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it's, it's an action film set in this parallel universe. It's kind of wild. It's kind of out there. (laughs) All right. Next. Uh, Do you want to go and pick another film? Yeah. What's up next? Um, let's see. Did you see Life of Pi? Life of Pi, yes. Life of Pi. I forget the name of the lead character, but it's an Ang Lee film based on a book about a boy who survives a uh, a boat cra- a boat wreck yes. and lives on a boat with a tiger for at least I think like a couple of months. I think it's a year, almost maybe. a year. Yeah. What did you okay. think of it? I thought it was amazing. Okay, like, go. top three films of the year for me. Top three films of the year for me. Really, really well done. Really good use of the 3D. I saw it. In, I think it was, I only saw. I think it was only available in 3D. So I saw it in 3D, and it looked absolutely amazing. I don't know. Mind blowing, actually. Graphic, visually mind blowing, especially because they used a live tiger for a lot of those scenes. And some other scenes, they used the uh, fake tiger. Yeah. A lot of digital splicing, but the 3D work I thought was the best part about the whole thing. They did 3D really, really well in this film. I thought it was just a, a, a beautiful film altogether. I didn't know. I, I went into it, it not knowing if I'd like it because I haven't read the – I never read the book. I, never, I didn't know anything either. about it. And uh, and then I was really surprised because I was like, this is a really interesting movie. It's kind of quiet because, the you know, half the time the, you know, the, it's a, the guy narrating, talking about being alone in the sea yeah. with the tiger. And um, – just visually stunning, and at the end of the movie, uh, I love the whole metaphor going on. It was just one of my favorite movies. Um, if it's not the Django Unchained that wins all the movie awards, I like to see Life of Pi because those two are the main movies that I liked this year. I think did it, get a cin- did it get a cinematography nod? I forget. Did it get a spot for cinematography? I think it did because it was really good on cinematography. It should. I think it got not cinematography spot. It did. I know it got best adapted screenplay. I think, or nomination for it. I mean, I'd have to look. But yeah, but I think you're right. Yeah, I mean, I I really liked that movie uh, a lot, and uh, I don't think it's getting yeah. as much credit as it should because it's being overshadowed by other. I think it's movies. definitely. Yeah, it definitely kind of get like a quiet run through when it was in the theaters, but it is a really good story. It's uh, I'd say it's kind of family friendly too. I mean, it's a little bit violent with the, with the tiger every now and then, but it, but it was I thought a really good film. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so I'm thinking definitely worth a view. Definitely worth a rent, not a rent, a view. Uh, I'd say go. Yeah, definitely buy it. You can go like, just go buy this film on DVD. If you can have a blue, I think if you have a Blu-ray TV, Blu-ray player, and like a giant TV, it'll be like a really good-looking video. Yeah, definitely worth a view. Like possibly, like probably the best visuals all year. There's a scene where uh, I guess the ho- like the, the main character and the tiger are like looking into the water, and he just has this dream sequence where he's trying to figure out like what's under there, and it just keeps going deeper and deeper and deeper, and it's just all in 3D. Like he passes fish. And whales, and then this, and the that he's that sank, and this like crazy underwater squid monster, and this giant freaky looking red creature, which looks like they might have used just they might have like made like a like a puppet and just mm-hmm. filmed it in the water because it looked like realistic as shit, and it was gigantic. It was like you know, fucking freaky, scary underwater deep monsters. By the way, apparently they found a giant squid that actually exists. They confirmed these because they always said like, oh, it could it, it could be real one day monster squids and stuff. Mm-hmm. They found like. They some guys in Japan found a 100 foot squid and filmed it 
And like, they, this guy, is this like 10,000 Leagues Under the Sea type squid? Like, you know, yeah, like, they found like, ugh. yeah, they found like a 100 foot squid in Japan. They went like really deep underwater. They finally hunted one down and it, it got video footage of it. And, and they like put it on. And they, like, I think it's coming on like Discovery Channel the next day or two, I think. Oh my God. Do you know what scares me? Most? I'd rather be in water with like a, a, a shark than in the water with like a giant octopus or a giant squid. That scares me yeah, no. more than a shark. No, I'd the, rather just be. Yeah, no, the scariest stuff. In the, you know, the scariest thing in the world to me is just like 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 a snake or something, some giant animal. Because like, yeah, the biggest animal on land is like an elephant. That's yeah. literally like the biggest animal that lives on the, on the land is an elephant. In the water, there are gig- like blue whale is huge, and there could be other stuff we don't even know about yeah. in like some of those other parts of the deep ocean. Like now, the they, they say monster. like and they. <laughs> And they say they say stuff, you know, because like there's so much pressure underwater that nothing really survived down there. We don't know that there could be some crazy, like metal plated beast underwater that's just gigantic. This just because it's just so much creepy, like looking into like deep black dark ocean as compared to like the sky. Yeah, the sky can hold a lot of big stuff in it, but it's just like some deep something that emerges just from the deep darkest depths of the ocean freaks me out. Yeah. Cause it, it'll drown yeah, you screw. and like, it'll, it'll like, you know, wrap its tentacles around you and then like drag you down yeah. all the way. Ugh. Yeah. And don't they squirt out? Yeah, they're like, or is that just the octopus? Yeah. I don't know. But like when James Cameron went to the bottom, of the, I like James Cameron went to the bottom of the ocean to like go think of the film with Avatar mm-hmm. and all that was down there was just little like giant little, like little tiny crabs that could somehow survive on yeah. the ocean floor. He went like so many miles down. I don't know. You should do a movie about going down and then getting attacked by like a, a giant squid thing that's two that thousand that's twenty thousand that's that's that's, that's yeah basically that is the league under sea they should do that he should make that movie because that would be a nightmare movie for me that's I would, what's the, isn't that what the abyss was kind of no the abyss was an alien that's true the abyss wasn't like a creature with tentacles and you know teeth yeah, and stuff yeah, I'd rather be in in, in like a, a shipwreck with uh, with the thing from the abyss than a giant squid. Yeah, it's, yeah. I agree with that. So yeah, freaky, freaky stuff. We just went off. <laughs> we just <laughs> went off topic, but that's okay. We did anyway. Life of Pi, really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> life of Pi, <laughs> really, really good. Take your kids to go see it. It's a family film, a little violent, but it's still a really cool, just moral morality tale. Definitely really wild to go see. I think it was PG. It might have been PG thirteen. I'm pretty sure it was PG though. Um, no, there was no cur- There was a little bit of violence, like animals killing animals. It's actually nothing, PG. There's like nothing beyond it. Is it PG? Yeah, I just checked IMDb. Okay. Yeah. So it's definitely a family thing. Cool. Um, yes. you want to talk about, cause let's see, well, Lincoln, we already talked about Lincoln on the last episode, I think. Yep. Last um, time I did see Lincoln. I did see Lincoln though. Finally. Yeah. And I was just kind of, bored. I was kind of bored by it. It was okay. It wasn't yeah. like the greatest movie out there, even though everybody's saying it's probably going to win all these awards. I'm like, this isn't like yeah, it, Steven Spielberg's best movie. It isn't. Daniel Day Lewis was really good as Lincoln. Like yeah. he was just really, really good as Lincoln. Everything else around it, though, was like, yeah, okay, I guess it's kind of right. I think it's going to go the same way that uh, the J. Edgar movie went with Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, like, yeah, it yeah. was, was kind of cool. Like, it was cool that he portrayed this character. It was a really good portrayal of the character. But the rest of the story was kind of like, oh, all right, it's kind of cool. Yeah, we know what I guess, I mean, you, you already know what's going to happen. I mean, yeah. it's, and like, but they built up so much suspense around, like, is it really going to happen? They built up so much, so, so much suspense around the whole thing. I'm like, eh. That's all right. And well, the how, did you like, about, how did you I'm like, like the, um, at the end when I told you about how the assassination, how you don't show it until yeah. you show that kid freak out? How good was that kid freak out? It was uh, it was okay. I was thinking a lot more. I was thinking he was going to like, st- I think everybody else, I thought it was going to be like more like everybody else is kind of like quietly stunned and he stands up in the middle of the audience and just starts shouting. It was more like everybody else was panicking and he was panicking too along yeah. with it. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Except he grabbed onto oh. that side rail yeah but yeah lincoln it's gonna win all the awards you'll f- see it on tv or see it like on blu-ray or i mean on red box in a few months yeah you'll be fine you aren't you're you're not gonna miss too much of a story you, everybody knows what happens yeah 
Uh, so what's okay? We're well, so thinking we discuss really quick. What else have we got? Um, zero dark thirty. Zero dark thirty. Uh, let's talk uh, about this. Let's talk about this. Oh wait, hold on. We're just one. What one? Um, what one? Uh, best animated feature. It was up between like Wreck It Ralph and Brave and Transylvania and Paranorman and Frank and Weenie. I'm trying to figure out what this one. There's not shown a title yet. Uh, who just won animated sh- animated film? They're not saying anything yet. Uh, hold on. This is a horrible idea. To, like a lot. I mean, this, this is this is when season four began. Brave one. Yeah. Pixar what? with the giant bear. <laughs> yeah. Well, Pixar always wins. I've never. Yeah, seen Pixar. So I've only seen yeah, so, Alf and Frank and Weenie and Paranorman, and I think Frank and Weenie yeah. and Paranorman are pretty looking pretty and better. And yeah. So Frank and Weenie, Frank and Weenie lost to the the Scottish Bear movie. Yeah, Wreck It Ralph lost and Bray and oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little I'm a little salty about that one. Oh well, it's only the Golden Globes, not the Oscars. Anyway, Zero Dark Thirty. Yes. Catherine Bigelow. Yes. Okay, Hurt Locker, I thought was absolutely amazing. Okay. I think this this film they built up too much suspense into it, mm-hmm. made it seem too much like yeah, America, because <laughs> like this they started out with an actual like live they like played part of a live clip of someone who died in the Twin Towers. It, it, it had like, a it, montage was, recording of a bunch of people that died in the, it. Was a yeah. And then it comes to like a few years later, they're all trying to hunt down Osama bin Laden. And like Jessica Chastain joins like the uh, the special forces out there and stuff, and I guess I think it's the I think what it is like there's this whole suspense thing and one there's like the whole suspense thing like are they gonna catch him and is she gonna survive in like in like uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan and stuff because like there's so many moments in the movie where they're thinking like oh we're not gonna find him oh we're not gonna find him even though they show in the trailer and the, the trailer shows literally the last half an hour of the film. Which is the, the best part of that hours. entire film. Huh? It's the last half hour is the only interesting part of that entire film. It's the yeah. best part of that film. It is. It was so slowly paced. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was mm-hmm. just just not good. Like, the script was just... I don't know. It was paperwork. The script was just... It was it the was, first hour was paperwork. It was just... Paperwork. And, that, and that, that and a bunch of Americans torturing terrorists, which they say we don't do. <laughs> Which has got to be like propaganda stuff, like, because I don't know. I don't understand so, yeah. why people are surprised that we've tortured people for information. What? How else are we going to get exactly. information? I don't un- like. Exactly. Yeah, we torture because they torture us. They'll torture we. Everybody does it because yeah. what's the big deal? Yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, zero dark thirty. It's a pass. I mean, I was just so. Look. bored by the whole thing it's it's getting it's definitely like i told somebody else i said that it was getting like uh, being told like when they were in when they were still writing it and then people were saying oh well they're doing a movie about it and Catherine bigelow is behind it they were already calling it oscar contender before the movie was even in yeah. principal production yeah and, and of course and it's not afterwards, that good of a movie. it isn't it was just the whole it's really, it is just like a big American pride propaganda thing. It was just like, America's just so cool and stuff. And like, yeah, we're good. Because like, the, and the whole thing was like, the last half of the, the trailer was the last half of the movie. The last half an hour of the movie is her getting the okay to go find Bin Laden. Mm-hmm. So, you know, she survives the whole film. She doesn't yep. get kidnapped or killed. And, you know, they kind of, they find Osama. So I'm like, yeah. okay, so. And there's like one thing like where he finally, like, he, he did, Osama gets shot. And you don't see his face. You just see him, like, kind of blurry in the background. But you can tell it's supposed to be him. He like, has, like, the white on and has the beard. And it shows him taking, like, blurry... Like, and it shows, like, out of focus, them taking pictures of him in the background. And so, and the guys are like, dude, you realize what you just did? Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah, like, oh, come on. Yeah. And so then, yeah, she... And then, like, I think the last scene is, like, she gets on the plane. She's defeated the, the, evil, the evil man, Osama. And she's just like sitting on the plane and just collecting her thoughts. And she kind of sniffles and the tears well up a little bit. And the music kind of slowly pipes in. Oh, this is really funny. I just noticed <laughs> Golden Globes are really cute. It was um, Best Comedic Actress. It was 
Tina Fey next to Jennifer Lopez holding hands, praying, which is <laughs> kind of really funny. And then it had George Clooney hitting on Amy Poehler, which is also really funny. Uh, oh, God. What's happening? Lena Dunham just won for girls. Oh, I have not seen that show because I don't know if I'd like it. I don't think oh, I would I like it. Oh, I hate the show. Oh, it's bad. And now she's just been, and now she, I hate the show so much. And now she's just been confirmed as like the next best. Com- oh, jeez, <laughs> I can't stand that show. So yeah, I'm kind of pissed off. Anyway, Zero Dark Thirty. I, so, yeah. I have a question for you about Zero Dark Thirty. If if the yes. movie hadn't been released in like December, or November, whatever, if it was say released in like. March or April, would you remember that movie come award season? No. No way. Exactly, right? I really wouldn't have. Right? You yeah. forget about if, it. If, yeah. Remember that movie Chronicle? That came out in February. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see? No one right? Chronicle. <laughs> I'm just it's, wondering. Yeah, it's just like, I just think that, uh, you know, from the beginning, it's, it's one it's of those because, movies from the beginning, it was set like, we're going to make this because of Catherine Bigelow. And, you know, the whole content of it, and people were talking about that they exactly. were like, this is going to be our award movie. We're, we're specifically releasing it around this time for award season and blah, blah, blah. But in, the, in all reality, that movie, if it wasn't, like, with Catherine Bigelow's name on it, um, and even if it was just some regular, you know, even if it was a Osama Bin Laden movie about killing or whatever, and if it was released any other time before award season, nobody would remember it. Yeah, because so, it's not good. I guarantee you. And if and if Catherine Bigelow makes one more film about the war on terrorism, I'm, <laughs> it's confirmed that she has a boner for Afghanistan. She just likes military stuff. <laughs> yeah, she. I mean, her locker I thought was amazing. Yes, I th- that's a way better was, movie than Zero Dark Thirty. And it, it was, and it was a piece of fiction. It was based on bomb technicians. Yeah, but it wasn't based on actual events. It was just like she made a, a narrative based on a person's occupation and it was a much better it was a much dramatically driven much better dramatically driven story mm-hmm. and it just turned out better because you didn't know what was going to happen with zero dark 30 you know how it's going to end and the trailers ruined the ending for you so you know there sh- everyone's going to survive till the end of it and stuff and it's just i don't know the tension wasn't think, there at I all think, it was just a lot of like i think that they they were they missed out on the important part of the story. It, it t- we knew it take. T- we we've all been waiting for ten years for them to get Bin Laden. So they made the movie like we were still waiting. And it says like cut that out. We know you had to go through all this crap, but just like start up to where she. You know they should have started the movie where where you know you see the Jessica Chastain um, agent or CIA or whoever. What, I think she's CIA, and just start from where she um, figures out where he might be because even then when she figured out and was trying to get her superiors to just get raid the house, it took them over a year before they said yes to it. So they should have started there yeah. and they should have focused more on the Navy SEALs. It really should have. Because they're the yeah. more interesting characters. I know they couldn't like release their names, but they could have still, you know, people like soldiers yeah. interesting in their background and Navy SEALs. Exactly. Are much, they should have gone there. It was a much better story than just having Jessica Stan do paperwork for two and a half hours. Oh yeah, I don't think she deserves any award. I, she's a good actress, but she's been in better movies. There's no, this is anybody could have done that. Yeah, role. yeah. So hopefully, Filing papers it'll all... does not make you an Academy Award winning actress. Yeah, so hopefully they'll give it to like somebody else. Who, who, yeah, they'll give it to somebody else this year, hopefully. Yeah. But yeah, so we we've torn through Lincoln, Life of Pi. Uh, what else do we tear through? Um, uh, Zero we've Dark already 30. talked about Argo, right? We talked about previously. Yeah, we talked about Argo. Argo, yeah, we talked about Argo last episode. Last episode, two months ago. Um, God, uh, I know Silver uh, Linings Playbook, but I don't think you saw that, right? I did not see that one, but was it any good? I mean, I it looks pretty good. good. It's pretty like, good. Got, I don't know if I got, called of it got award winning. It got Bradley Cooper nominations, so I mean, it's pretty wild. He's good. He plays somebody who um, who's bipolar. And has other okay. problems, and he. Uh, the movie starts with him getting released from a. I don't know if it's a mental institution, I guess, but like a rehab mental institution from Baltimore, and he lives in Philly, and um, 
he basically had a breakdown where he caught his wife cheating on him and he just kind of beat the crap out of the guy so bad he almost killed him. So instead of jail, he went oh, wow. to this mental institution and come find out he has, he's bipolar and he has, you know, okay. a lot of anxiety issues. And so it's him coming back after eight months being in this mental institution rehab and he's living with his parents who Robert Nero plays his father and I forget who plays his mother. And who's the father? father? Robert De Niro. Oh, they said Robert Plant. I'm like, whoa. No. no. <laughs> from Rob, Robert, Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin. Like, that'd, be a, like, that'd be the best dad ever if your dad is Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin. Like, I'd be, I would want to come home every night. <laughs> yeah. Like, why do you have problems? Yeah, it should just be awesome. Um, your, dad and, is, your dad is Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so he comes back and he's trying to better himself. And he wants to get back with his wife. But his whole family is trying to be like, your, your wife's probably like left you. She's not coming back. You have problems. Yeah. And he yeah. meets um, Jennifer Lawrence, who um, he, she recently lost her husband, and she's kind of got issues, too. And it's them both having, like, issues and becoming friends and trying to better each other. Yeah. Well, that's good, at least. I mean, Jennifer Lawrence is a really good actress. She just won the Golden Globe for that movie tonight. For, yeah, she uh, was really good at in it. And it looks more like it's a comedy more than the drama it says. It's or, it's got it's got dramatic it was, elements because Bradley Cooper has a lot of breakdowns in it and and I can see why he yeah. was nominated because it's kind of hard where he just like snaps and starts to freak out. Um but there is a lot of comedy to it as well. There's a lot of comedy between him and, and Jennifer Lawrence and actually Chris Tucker um shows up and he's got a small supporting role and he's funny in it. And um, there's a lot of comedy in it, but there are um, dramatic parts, too. So, yeah. it's a dramedy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I, I do want to see it. It does look pretty good. I really want to get into it, so. Yeah. Um, what, else, what else is out? Uh, Les Mis. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have not seen Les Mis yet. I saw a screener of it, and I will tell you this. I do not like Les Mis. I, I, I don't like the Broadway play. I had to read the book in like sixth grade and I hated the, the reading it and I hated yeah. seeing the Liam Neese, Neeson movie, which is, wasn't, you know, just a straight movie. Wait, Liam Neeson. There's a Liam Neeson Les Mis movie, but it's not a musical. It's just, oh. the, just, just the book oh. itself. And then they, um, they made a Broadway version, obviously, but I, I don't, care for it and then when i saw the movie i still didn't give a shit i don't care <laughs> at all you just don't care i just don't care you know they nice. I, I, I didn't think the singing was that great either it was kind of annoying russell crow made my ears bleed <laughs> really no i, I definitely i, I like i like the concept that they said they were they recorded like they sung every take live which is kind of a cool twist yeah, i like well, how Anne that Hathaway, you could see the earpiece in her ear Oh, you can. I thought, I think it, yeah, I think I kind of, that's, that's, when she, because her, her big scene, which everybody's raving about, that she'll probably win an, uh, an Oscar yeah. for, like, it's a close-up, a like, real close-up, and anytime like, she you would her head, I could kind of see, like, what looked like a clear earpiece, like, in, like, her left oh, ear. No. So I was like, okay, Tom I Hooper see. Dropped, dropped the ball. Well, he dropped the ball when he cast Russell Crowe. <laughs> That guy, yeah. is a horrible singer. Oh, no, he has that. He he has that, that soft rock acoustic band he's in. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Go, his voice does not go. It's just really yeah. bad. It, it was not. He was horrible in it. He's a great actor, but he's a horrible singer and should have never been cast in that movie. They could have gotten somebody better. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, I could see that. I will say, you so, know, Hugh Jackman was good because I know Hugh Jackman can can sing, and he really he has a theater himself. back himself. Yeah, he's very good, but I mean, I just don't care for Les Mis, so I don't really. Um, it was it's beautifully shot, though. I will give it that. Very, you know, if if Life of Pi doesn't take cinematography awards, Les Mis probably could because it has got really nice look to it. It's just a little overrated. I think it's more. It's more for the musical people. Wait, 
Random side note, randomly. Okay. Was Jody was Jody Foster in Gremlins? Jody Foster? Yeah. In Gremlins? No. Okay, I just I'm watching like the side of my eye again. There's been a lot of Golden Globe stuff tonight where they're like going back into the audience and having fun with the people waiting in the audience. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> they had Tina Fey and Amy Poehler were getting drunk after they lost to to Lena Dunham from Girls. And so they have mm-hmm. Lena Dunham, Lena Dunham over there, like protecting her, protecting her Golden Globe with like with like two fists in the air, and they have them just like on the stage, just yelling at her back and forth. And they just had <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. just gave Jodie Foster it looked like it was like a stuffed gremlin toy, and she began to fake eat it. So I have no idea what's going on. What? And like Glenn, Cl- <laughs> and Glenn Close, no, it was Meryl Streep was pretending pretend to be drunk, and so uh, yeah. I thought Meryl Streep wasn't there. And now there's. Now there's a Jodie Foster montage going on. Oh, so I don't know what's going on. The Lifetime Achievement Award. Well, that's kind of cool, because she was good in a bunch of movies. That's kind of yeah. cool. Good for her. Yeah. I'm glad she's winning this, then. That's kind of cool. Whoa, contact. Nice. I'm confused. All right. Anyway. Yeah, now I'm just... I'm hooked on... I'm an, the, the editing nerd in me is watching this Jodie Foster montage now, and I'm kind of stuck into it. Like, Taxi Driver and Panic Room. They're showing all the good, best movies she's been in. Who's uh, presenting it to her? Like, Who's presenting the award? Looked like it was Downey. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, she directed us. him in that that movie, the movie that they filmed in your neighborhood. In your in my neighborhood? What? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that new thing coming out. I don't know what it's called yet, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, no, 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 it still no, hasn't. No. That old, that old. <laughs> movie. Home for the yeah. holidays or whatever. Was it? Yeah, she directed that with Rob Down. Oh, that movie. Home for the Holiday. That's right. I forgot about that one. Home for that's right. Home for the Holidays. That's what it was. That's why she's. That's what they were. No. It for. Was she in that? I thought it was Holly Hunter was the lead. Holly Hunter no, was the lead in that. She directed it. She directed that movie. Oh. Okay, and the Beaver. They showed the Beaver again just now. Oh, I'm the Beaver. Oh gosh. Home for the there it is. Home for the Holidays. There it is. They just showed it. Filmed in Baltimore. Filmed in my back. Filmed in my name. Filmed across <laughs> the street from me. Awesome. But yeah, we got on the Judy Foster kick now. That's not good. Um, what else would you like to talk about? I think uh, we went through all of the... I think we've talked about all of the big movies that are nominated for the awards. I think we've gone through them we all. The, Ho- the Hobbit. Oh, well, you talk about The Hobbit. Because I watched it, but I don't like Lord of the Rings. But I saw it. Okay. No, I was definitely uh like I was definitely into the Hobbit. Okay. I was definitely really into it. But I feel like there's but, a but. I, don't know. I was into it, but I don't know how they're gonna make it into three films. I mean I'm gonna definitely go see all three films because mm-hmm. I was really into the story. I mean like it's three yeah, because it felt like fifth grade again. I read the book when I was in fifth grade. It felt like fifth grade again. I was really into it. So that's good. Am but I the I only person who's sure never read these books in school? I haven't read them in school. What? I haven't okay. read them, period. Yeah. Me either. But I loved it. <clears throat> I went to the movie theater. To go see The Hobbit? To see The Hobbit. I haven't that's been some to break the movie theater. Because, like, in that Die Hard, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the first Die Hard, yeah, the fourth one. But you, it is funnier if you say, "Oh, hard. the first you, one." Yeah, you mean Die? <laughs> you mean Die Hard for that? But, yeah, like, Live wow. Free Die Hard. I haven't that's been to movie theater great. since that. Well, that's still that's still like eight. That's still like five or six years ago. Yeah, and I was like, "Cool, damn." And I didn't know if I wanted to, you know, sit there and watch it because I did see Lord of the Rings in in theaters, and it, it was a kind of a pain yeah. in my ass, literally. It, for, did it did it feel long to you? The I don't Hobbit? Think it didn't really feel like. Yeah. No, I thought the Hobbit was was you know, really good. Uh, like you know, it was it was kind of quick. Yeah, there was definitely like I guess Lord of the Rings: Return of the King and stuff. There were definitely moments. There were definitely moments in that. You're watching TV again, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, so I read an my interview girl, with Peter girl, Jackson, and he did say My girlfriend's watching the Hobbit. 
What? My girlfriend is watching. My girlfriend is watching Doctor Who. Got the Golden Globes on t- TV next to me. But she's watching a documentary about Doctor Who. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. <laughs> uh, but, oh my god, I'm just all distracted now. But yeah, The Hobbit. Um, it is pace pacing. Faster. I thought went really- yes. It is for being a th- for being almost a three hour movie. It definitely paced through itself faster. It definitely did. But does it really have to go through three movies? Like, couldn't it, they it have? Doesn't. I mean, keep it due to one. I'm trying to figure this all out because I've been reading a lot, trying to figure this all out. When I heard that they were making the Hobbit great, and then it was supposed to be two, but then it turned into three, and yeah. th- they're apparently like working in a lot of the appendices and stuff into the movies to kind of create you know things the way tolkien wrote apparently as i said i never re- read any of the book but apparently like the way he wrote was just you know he wrote the hobbit he wrote lord of the rings and then like and there's these appendices which is all this stuff that happens during the storyline of lord of the rings and uh the hobbit but like a different port parts and stuff so th- it's yeah. kind of like doing that and then there's apparently some stuff in the appendices that kind of bridge uh, between Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. So I'm not sure if maybe that's what the third film is going to kind of oh, more yeah. focused on and the second one is going to kind of be the end of the Hobbit, but then the third one is going to kind of be like a segue really heavily on... So I, I'm really kind of confused and um, waiting. <clears throat> the other thing yeah. I, I didn't know about going to see The Hobbit was because it's one chapter of a book you know so to speak you know it's it's the first part of a trilogy and it's like i get all it into is. it i'm getting into the characters i'm getting into the storyline now you have to wait a year yeah luckily they're going to release the dragon <laughs> hey, luckily it's going to be they're going like to release the yeah they're releasing part they're releasing part 2 in a, in a year and they're releasing part 3 6 months after part 2 yeah so that's at least they're not pacing it out every year, but yeah, that, that's going to be lucky. The one that I so I, I basically liked the whole lot of it, and you know, to drop back into the collective show days, I, I have a hard time saying like why I love something, and I really loved the movie. Uh, but I can point out one thing I didn't like. I, 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 I was that I didn't like how the movie starts at the same point in time that Fellowship well, that's of the because- Ring starts. Yeah. Only because this thing always irks me with prequels and, and shit like that. He, in in The Hobbit, they're showing the same day, so he's like, going to the party, see you at the party, people say you're a grump. All those little lines were, were bugging the shit out of me. It's like, we've already seen that movie, we've covered the party, yeah. we've covered the party even more in the extended edition. We don't need more of this party planning in The Hobbit. Oh, it's because they want to tell you, like, oh, it's like, like before Bilbo leaves, he wants to tell this last story in this book. Yeah, I, w- I would a, say. Should be a, and now it's going to be a nine hour flashback. Yeah, Peter Jackson yes. has done just nothing but, but great decision after great decision after great decision. And I just got to say, the, the start of, of The Hobbit, at least for me, was a huge misstep. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Because, but I also think so that too. also adds with with why they had to why they had to make it into three movies as well because I think there's a lot of stuff that probably even though there's probably big fans that love it but for a regular person who's just going into it and is not a like yeah. huge fan of Lord of the Rings like that's stuff that they could put in those extended editions cuz fans will buy it they don't care if it's like one movie that oh yeah goes 3 hours 4 hours long they'll buy it but I just want to I don't under, I just think they could have made one yeah. movie even if it's like 3 hours long like people will go and sit there, but they, I think they could have gotten one yeah, movie out of it. I could see him doing two. Yeah, I could see him. I could see him do two part movie. It is a big book. Yeah, two would be fine. I could handle well, two movies. It's the smaller book out of all the Lord of the Rings books. Like, yeah, no, if they did it like with the Matrix and Harry Potter, they did it like a two, a two, like a two movie book, but like six months apart. Like you put one out in the Christmas yeah. time, one out in June. Perfect. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, but, I just uh, like, I think it's too a year long. Apart, yeah, a year apart's too much. But but they know that the, those those huge diehard fans of of um, Lord of the Rings will go and oh, yeah. see it. But um, yeah. I just 
other people don't care. They'll wait for a DVD or they just don't care. Yeah, I'd say that. Uh, Jodie Foster is making everybody cry. Why? Huh? Why is she? What is she saying? I don't know. I guess she's saying, but she's. All I'm telling you is like they keep cutting everybody's faces, and like Anne Hathaway's crying, Kristen Wiig is crying. Uh, Anne Hathaway's always crying. That doesn't count. Yeah, everybody's crying. But yeah, I think is that it for films? I think we went through. Oh, well, I saw Flight with Denzel too. Denzel on Flight. Yeah, I did see that. Did we talk yeah, about that? I feel dumb. like we might have talked about that. No, we did too. Okay. Denzel to... is an alcoholic. It's kind of kind of dull. I feel like there's something else that might have been out that, that was cool that we saw. Oh, I will say, um, I saw the documentary um, West of Memphis. I don't think it was. What is it? West of Memphis. And if you're, no, that and if you've seen the... seen the Paradise Lost movies about the West Memphis Three. Uh, oh. This yeah. one is actually, speaking of Peter Jackson, it's produced by Peter Jackson and um, also by one of the guys of West Memphis 3 as they got out. And it's basically them, as if like they were able to hire lawyers to give their side of the story, like show their evidence on and prove who the real killer is, even though they can't really yeah. go back to it. It was a really good movie or documentary. If you haven't seen the um, the Paradise Lost movies, you see that, and then watch this movie or this documentary. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think I guess we should wrap, wrap it up for now, and we'll try again in two weeks to see if Alpha's here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, wonderful. For that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on the. The slow start, but it is season five. We're going to damn this to do something every two weeks for you guys. We're really, really, really going to try. We promise. <laughs> and I guess that's it for now. I mean, uh, any other last words? Alpha, we've <laughs> only been like three months. Uh, yeah. Yep. So, help me. Show, show, show.